Hello investigators and welcome to Until the End of Time. My name is Veronica. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been meaning to make a video on the recent Arkham news, but I haven't been able to make the time. And then last night on the Mythos Busters podcast, Jeremy and Maxine just went and gave us Charlie Kane, one of the six new investigators from the upcoming expansion. So I decided to just make a video about Charlie and wrap all the other news in with it. This video might end up being a little rushed, so I apologize for that, but I hope you enjoyed all the same. So before we get to Charlie, a quick news update for those of you that missed it. So for the last couple of weeks, um, FFG has been doing a lot of things on Twitter, uh, Coterie reports uh, from an organization called The Foundry, which is leading up to this announcement of the Scarlet Keys, the next expansion. Uh, there's a link to the video and some of the reports in the description below if you're interested and you didn't see that. But what we do know is that the Scarlet Keys will be this globe trotting campaign and that the investigator expansion with that will contain six investigators, of which four returning and two new ones. The My plan was originally to make a video on these new investigators and speculating, but since we now already know everything there's to note about Charlie, I'm just going to fold in kind of the guesses with this video. So going real quick, uh, we know that we're getting Daryl Simmons, who is the photographer. Uh, he is speculated to have Seeker and Survivor access uh, because he's shown up on a couple of Seeker and Survivor cards before. Uh, he might even be the long-awaited Survivor 0-5, Seeker 0-2. Next up, we have Carlson Sinclair, the butler. Um, I'm not quite sure what to make of him. There's a lot of speculation that he might either be Guardian or Seeker or even Survivor. I have a hunch he might be about item cards, just like Bob is, but we really don't know right now. He's hard to make a clear link between what he did in the previous games, where he was very supporty and helped give the other investigators more actions, and the card game where I think his kind of abilities wouldn't just just wouldn't work. Next up, we have Vincent Lee, the Doctor. Um, a lot of people expect Vincent to be very similar to Carolyn, but probably changed in some subtle but meaningful ways to make them not just mirrors of each other, which they were in other games. So I expect his cards to care about healing, but not necessarily to be exactly Carolyn's deck building or exactly Carolyn's stats. Uh, I have him guessed as a guardian. Some people say he's going to be a seeker to differentiate from uh, Carolyn even more because he is uh, quite well studied and he does know quite a bit and usually investigates things quite thoroughly. But we'll have to see what, what it ends up being. And then of our two new investigators, uh, we don't know very much either. Uh, we do know that one of them looks like she's operating some kind of radio or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, which is, if you're looking at the images right now, the central character in the leftmost image. Uh, and the other character, uh, which is on the front of the... Uh, campaign expansion as well as in the middle of the middle image um, we don't know much about them we're guessing that they are going to be the rogue what we do know because Maxine confirmed this for us is that they are the first non-binary investigator openly non-binary investigator that uses they them pronouns which is very cool I'm always glad to see FFG putting more uh, representation in this game and yeah this is a big in my opinion it's a big win so thank you very much FFG for doing that but all that being said, we're here for Charlie Kane today because last night the entire Charlie Kane investigator card as well as the signature asset and weakness were revealed, so we have everything we need to play. Um, now, since we're getting six investigators in the box, a lot of people already suspected that Charlie was going to be a neutral investigator, which we've only seen one of so far, Loa Hayes. And it turned out that was correct. Uh, Charlie is the politician and he has one willpower, one intellect, one combat, and one agility. That's Preston's thoughts, and they're really not anything you can work with without a very powerful ability to back it up, but as Preston has shown, if you have a powerful ability, you can more than make up for it and become a very powerful investigator. Um, he's got six health and six sanity, which are actually below the curve, um, makes him a little squishy, and he's got the civic and socialite traits, which I don't think have any bearing so far. Now, to my knowledge, Charlie has only appeared on a single card in the LCG so far, but it is a pretty important card. That card is Charisma. Uh, he show and so for a long time, people have assumed that when Charlie was going to appear in the LCG, he was going to have something to do with allies. Now, let's find out if that's correct or not. 
His first ability reads, you have three additional ally slots. Right, Charlie just comes with three Charismas right out of the gate. He starts the game with four ally slots, potentially six if you buy two copies of Charisma. That's really strong. Ally cards are some of the strongest assets in the game because they're like they're your helpers. They're people who usually give you stop boosts or incredibly powerful abilities, and they're really balanced around the fact that you can only bring a couple of them at a time, and you need charisma to which costs three XP in order to even have more than one. So for Charlie to just go, I get four allies is already really powerful, and it already makes me go, "Wow, this is an investigator you're going to be able to do some stuff with." But there's more. A free triggered ability, during a skill test you are performing, exhaust an ally asset you control. For this test, you get plus one skill value, plus an additional skill uh, for each skill icon that asset has that matches this test's type. So it's a little wordy, but basically what this means is that you can always exhaust an ally to give yourself plus one to a uh, skill value. And then if the skill you're testing is one that has matching icons on the ally, you get an additional boost. So for example, you have a guard dog. Guard dog has a combat skill icon. You can exhaust the guard dog for plus one intellect, plus one willpower, or plus one agility, or plus two combat. This is a powerful ability, especially if you uh, need to make tests happen with that four, those four ones in his stats, you just need allies, right? We are now seeing this picture of you're going to have four allies in play. They each are going to have some skill icons on them and you can use them by exhausting them to power up his stats and to pass tests, no problem, right? That That's going to be powerful. Um, it's, it's really good. And then finally, his Elder Sign effect is a plus three, which is no joke. Uh, there's not a lot of plus three Elder Signs because it's pretty... Pretty big amount. And then you also ready an ally asset at your location. Just a very solid Elder Sign. I don't think it's one you necessarily build around, but it's one you're never going to be sad to see. And uh, important to note that it uh, isn't just an, an ally asset you control. You can hit, hit your teammates' assets with that. Now, that's Charlie. A very powerful ally, uh, investigator that cares about allies and centers all about using his allies to power him up and, and be this yeah, person who knows people. But what about his deck building, right? Because that's where we're really going to see how far we can push him. Well, let's have a look. So he's got the 30 card deck size that's pretty standard, but that's about the only standard thing about him. When you build a Charlie deck, you're going to pick two different classes from Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, Mystic, or Survivor. So you can go in any of those five directions. And then your deck building options are ally cards from level 0 to 5 from any class, not just the two you picked. Neutral cards 0 to 5, and cards from your chosen class level 0 to 2. So to be clear, you can get any ally in the game in Charlie. You're not just restricted to those two classes, but you're also getting any other card 0 to 2 from those classes. This gives Charlie, I think, one of the broadest class accesses at level 0, but it kind of falls off over time. I think at level 0, the only investigator I think who has more options is Lo uh, Lola Hayes, and otherwise he's... He can just grab whatever, right? But you're going to run into diminishing returns with him because your in-class XP options are very limited. People usually refer to three as the breakpoint between off-class and main-class cards, and Charlie can only take these off-class cards. But he makes up for that by getting the most powerful allies in the game. Uh, I've already actually tried Charlie once. I just spun up a quick game of the gathering this morning and i went mono red which is to say i only took survivor zero to two and then any number of allies from other factions and that deck was already really good like it crushed through the gathering so i'm expecting charlie to be a very powerful investigator if you know the card pool very well if you have like an id what you want to build around um and i really like this implementation where it feels it's not as broad as Lola, so I feel like Lola still has a place in the card pool. And we also have some rumor that Lola might be getting a buff with the next taboo list, which is awesome. Um, but so Charlie's not Lola in the like, I can play any of these five factions. I can get all these different cards. He's more focused and more centered, but he still has this kind of you can build him in your own way and you can choose your direction and, and you could have 10 different Charlie decks that all look very differently and all play very differently because they've picked these different classes. Uh, he's also got some signature cards, Bonnie Walsh, Burden of Leadership and a random basic weakness. 
And I just want to give a big shout out to Maxine and Jeremy because they actually just gave us these signatures, which means we can immediately start playing them, which is great because in the past, we've sometimes had investigators previewed by uh, content creators and then not get the signature. So we can't actually like finish theory crafting until after we also get the signatures. Uh, now, Bonnie Welch, the loyal assistant, is a three cost asset with two wild icons, which for Charlie, of course, really matters because you can exhaust her to get plus three to any test. She's got the ally, civic, and assistant trait, and Charlie Kane deck only, as you would expect. Reaction after you exhaust Bonnie Walsh, ready another ally asset you control, limit once per round, very important. Two health, two sanity, and takes up the ally slot. Historically, signature assets that take up the ally slot are a bit of a liability, like um, Ursula's uh, Jake Williams, I think he's called. He's always been considered kind of a, a bad card because that ally slot is just super competitive. But for Charlie, I think we can make an exception because he's already getting three for free. So Bonnie can get that slot and she's also really, really good. She's doing everything I want a Charlie signature to do. She's very strong, right? If there's a test, you just have to pass, exhaust her, get plus three to any test and ready another ally you control. So you can use different ally abilities and I don't like... There's a lot of combo potential there. I'm going to actually mention uh, a couple, I think, down the line. But for now, it's just like Bonnie lets you do exactly what you want to do. And I think she's a very powerful card. I think a lot of decks are going to want to have her out on the table as soon as possible. And then his uh, weakness is a treachery, burden of leadership. Revelation, if you control no ally assets, shuffle burden of leadership back into your deck. Otherwise, each ally asset you control, for each ally asset you control, I should say, either, either exhausted or deal it one direct damage and one direct horror. This is, okay, this is fine. I don't think, I mean, there's no weakness that's, that's ever nice, but I think this one's not too bad. You're often just going to exhaust your board. Just go, okay, I don't have allies for one turn. If you draw it as an upkeep, it's kind of risky because if you draw like an enemy in Mythos, maybe you'll have to deal with that right now. But I think generally speaking, this is not, it's not too bad of a weakness if you just exhaust your entire board and go, that's okay. I can, you know, take a turn off to draw cards or play setup cards and then keep going and have no real like lingering consequences of that weakness. So yeah, I'm I'm okay with it. I think this is a, not a big hit to Charlie. I think you can just play Charlie how you want and not worry about his weakness too much. So Charlie's only been revealed or sorry, previewed for like 12 hours at this point. So please bear in mind, I'm just going with like the first instinct and the first things that I come up with. But let's talk about what we want to do with Charlie, because obviously in the next couple of days and weeks, people are going to find more and more synergies and combos. But for now, let's just get started in a pretty you know, starter standard place. And so I think the first place to start is that Charlie is going to be very setup heavy because he relies on having a board full of cards that he can exhaust to get skill values and to get extra abilities out of because all of his allies, um, yeah, get, just getting four allies is powerful in and of itself. But in order to do that, he needs cards that let him draw cards, cards that let him gain resources, cards that give him extra actions, just so he can do all of that setup. Fortunately, there are allies for all of that. So Laboratory Assistant is a great cheap include. You play it, you get two extra cards, and then you can exhaust her to get plus two on intellect test, plus one on any other test. You can use her for soak. You could use her for calling in favors to find other allies. Great include. David Renfield is a card that I almost forgot about and then went, oh, this is really, really good because you can exhaust Renfield to get more money, which is normally like good enough on its own. But then I remember that with Bonnie, you can exhaust Bonnie to ready Renfield and that way double the amount of money he makes you. I was playing Renfield this morning and I was swimming in cash. Just make sure you have some way of killing him because I also didn't bring enough painkillers and then ended up having Renfield cost me like two turns after I drew an Ancient Evils. So yeah, don't do that. And then Renfield's probably really good, right? You get a lot of money. He gives you plus one willpower. Um, he's nice to have around. You can call him in favor of him or do whatever to get rid of him. Uh, finally, Leo De Luca. It's an old standby from the core set. It's just going to be good. And you have that slot sitting around. You just play Leo. Don't worry about it. And you're going to be, yeah, you get an extra action every turn. What's so bad about that? Uh, and then one thing that I want to just mention, uh, so you can take Peter Sylvester and Jessica Hyde, which is the classic kind of infinite soak engine. And one of the cool things that I can imagine with Charlie is that there will be Charlie decks that like lean into that and they take 
uh, Guardian cards like Solemn Vow to use this as a protective engine. And then there's going to be Charlie decks that don't care about this at all and do something completely different because maybe they care about clues or they care about doing some other kind of support things. Or maybe you go Mystic Charlie. Like it's not, it's one of these things where because Charlie is neutral and he has so many different options for deck building, there's not going to be one correct Charlie deck. You can build your Charlie deck to match what your group needs. And maybe that's Infinite Soak and maybe that's lots of clues and maybe it's something else entirely. Um, and so I also grabbed a couple of cards that care about allies but aren't allies themselves. So I've mentioned Calling in Favors like three or four times already because it's just such a good card and it's neutral so you can play it in any deck and I kind of expect it will be a two of in every Charlie deck that has access to it because it lets you return an ally to your hand to search your deck for another ally, put it into play and play it for cheaper. This is just really powerful. You can use it to reset Renfield. You can use it to find your signature. You can use it for all sorts of things. And it's cheap, it's neutral. And because you have those four ally slots, you can also replay the ally that you return to your hand. So may say it's um, the laboratory assistant, right? You bounce that to your hand, you play it again, you get another two cards, it's great. A chance encounter is a survivor card that lets you replay any ally from any deck or any discard pile, rather, I should say, uh, for only one cost. You only get it for a round, but if it has a powerful enter the battlefield or sorry, enter, enter playability or something else, it might very well be worth it. And there's also a level two version of this card that you can do the same thing, but it costs X, where X is the card, uh, the ally card's cost, and then it stays around forever. So if you want to have allies that just like stay around forever or bring your allies back, Chance Encounter seems great. You want to go Survivor Charlie for that one. Flare, another good reason to go Survivor Charlie. Uh, you can search the top nine of any Investigator's deck for an ally asset, put it into play under your control for no cost. And that's a big thing with this card. It does cost an XP because it exiles, but when you do this, you can put cards like Agency Backup into play for no cost. Leo De Luca, six cost ally, pay, pay two, put it into play, no problem. Uh, then next up we have protecting the unknown deck, which I believe is how you pronounce that. I looked it up. It's a real word. It's really cool. I know it's been a thing in the in the community uh, that it's a seeker or mystic event that you can use to get back either get a ally that just got defeated or discarded back to your hand or draw three cards. And now one of the nice things about this being a multi class card is that even if you're not going seeker and mystic you can go one of those two as Charlie and then just slide this in. So I expect to see this in quite a few Charlie decks because you'll have so many allies. And, you know, drawing cards, I think, will be an important thing to do with him because you need that that constant stream of allies coming in and helping you out. And then finally, a nice little Guardian include Inspiring Presence that you ready an ally as well as heal it. And it's a very versatile uh, skill spread on that skill card. So very nice if you just need to use an ally one more time uh, you will have allies around. That's almost a given as Charlie. And then I just wanted to quickly mention uh, a bunch of high XP allies because that is where Charlie's deck building is going to probably really take off. And, and, and this is where you're going to spend most of your XP because you can't spend it in those uh, zero to two very well. Now, keep in mind, obviously, Charlie's going to be released as part of an expansion. It's going to bring you know over 100 new cards to the game. So most likely we will have other XP options for Charlie by then. But just for now, I wanted to mention a couple of these. AGC Backup is uh, a seven cost Guardian uh, ally that's very expensive, but if you've got it around, it's gonna do so much work for you. It's gonna find you clues, it's gonna deal damage, it's gonna soak for you. And if you have cards like Agency, uh, not, not Agency Backup, sorry, Flare or um, Calling in Favors, you can cheat the, the resource cost quite a bit. And I expect a lot of Charlie decks will be running, you know, cards that mess with the resource cost of allies. Agency backup is a nice late game force to be reckoned with. And you have, you know, whatever classes you need to get economy from, you can also, you know, make a lot of money. Maybe you're using Renfield, maybe you're playing rogue cards. Speaking of rogue, guard, rogue cards, Chuck Fergus, the O'Banion driver, cares about tactic and trick cards. If you want to, you could build a Charlie deck that's all about tactic and tricks. Grab Chuck as your first include, and because of that, uh, class spread, you can pick whatever classes and whatever you think has the right tactics and tricks for your deck. I think this is going to be a really cool deck. I think not a lot of people are going to be expecting it, but when you when you play it, it probably is going to work much better than you think it will. 
Iqua, I believe is how you pronounce it. I hope it's how to pronounce that. Is a, a Mystic card I haven't seen around a lot, but I think would be very cool. One of the things I've noticed is that she can hide basic weaknesses, but if you do, you're going to lose your stats. Well, Charlie doesn't really care about his stats anyway, so if you have some way of not really caring about willpower tests and intellect tests, then you're just going to be able to ignore all the basic weaknesses for your entire team, put them under her, and then just protect her, and then you don't have to worry about those things anymore, and it's really good. Michael Lee is from Edge of the Earth, and he's a Guardian and Seeker multi-class, and I think he's going to be very good if you want to take Charlie more of a monster hunting strategy. He gives you intellect and combat boost and can be exhausted for plus three uh, intellect or plus three combat with Charlie's ability, but he also gets this evidence as you gather clues and can then be used to deal additional damage. Keep in mind that Charlie's not going to be able to take any big weapons because of his class restriction. So you're going to look at your allies to see if you can deal additional damage. And Michael Lee seems like a very nice, reusable source of additional damage. And then I think this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't at least mention the Red Cloth Man. We know he's related to the next campaign and I'm super excited to see what they're going to do with him. But he's a 5 XP neutral ally that I think is kind of perfect for Charlie in some ways. Depends on how you build your deck, obviously, but getting to set two of your stats that were originally one now to six means you can do just about anything. And then he's a big, a big soak. Uh, you don't care about him taking up the ally slot because most likely you will have a spare ally slot. And then you can use cards like Chance Encounter or Protecting the Unic to get an extra use out of him. So that's really powerful. And I really hope people will try Red Cloth Man in Charlie. That's all i got to say for now. As I mentioned at the top, this video is a bit of a rush. I apologize. Um, I hope it was still entertaining and I don't really have a big sign off. I'm just still very excited for Arkham and I hope to be able to do more videos soon, but life's been a lot recently and uh, I appreciate everybody who's been very supportive. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, you can comment on this video. You can find me on Twitter at Until Arkham and I'm on the Mythos Buster Discord as well as the Drone to the Flame Discord as Veronica. Just go and find me there. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be seeing you until the end of time.